All right guys, it is day two on repairing this engine a second time. Um, last week I was in the same boat with the engine kind of apart, not completely or anything, but I, I took this apart expecting to have cracked ring lands like I had last week. And come to find out, it was actually just some residual damage from the ring lands that were cracked last week um, so for those of you who haven't seen this is what happened last week I think I was running too much boost I was running 17 pounds of boost um, it was actually running a little rich but um, maybe the rings touched and popped the ring land or something um, but yesterday I started tearing this apart expecting to find broken ring lands I didn't. So I was thinking, oh, maybe I have a cracked ring, or maybe the um, the second ring or the oil ring or something um, had cracked ring lands. So this is the valve right here. After I lapped it, it doesn't look great. But as you go around, there's I think it was right here. There's a spot, but right here that wouldn't clean up. And I figured, hey, like. You know, this isn't super flat, but I did check it, and it looks flat. And this has a little bit of a rock to it. I don't know if you can see that. But it rocks. Right there, right here in the middle. Right where it did not clean up. But anyways, trust me, it rocks. And I put one of the other valves on there, an old exhaust valve, and it didn't rock at all. Um, and you could also see, I'll add actually a video right here. We can see that there's a burnt spot on the, on the valve, so it was probably getting ready to completely toast the valve. Um, but now I've been letting a few of these valves sit, soak overnight. Uh, from my old set of heads that had a, uh, a crack in them. So I pulled all the valves, valve springs, everything out of them in case I needed anything. And lo and behold, they came in handy. We'll dig into this. So what we can do is I'll, I'll select the best looking valve out of these, uh, this batch. Bring them over here to the cylinder heads and I'll clean them up and stuff. Bring it over to the head and uh, what I'll do is I have some grinding compound and I'll get them in there and I'll grind the valves to the, um, the, the valve seat and hopefully both surfaces clean up really nice and um, I don't have to swap heads or bring these heads to get any machine work done to them. So this, these had a lot of carbon build up on them. They came out pretty good. Well this one did anyways, except we could still see some heavy um, rust on them, probably from sitting at the junkyard. So I'll just find the least rusty one. Man, that's a, a lot of carbon actually still on there it looks like. I don't know if you guys can see that. A lot of carbon. But I need these. These aren't nearly as corroded. But I'll save these anyways for next time I build bend another valve and another set of heads. There's massive pitting on this one. Not sure. Yeah, you can see that. But I will definitely be th throwing that one away. Valve. 
I'm not sure if you can see, but I don't really see any pitting. Oh, maybe a little spot there, but it's it's very minor. It's actually a little corrosion, but it's not like super pitted. So that'll probably come out with a little lapping and grinding. So just for example, this is what they look like when they come out of the chem dip. They're just completely filthy. All right, well, I take it back. This one's just rusted. Really bad. So, that one goes in the trash too. valve grinding compound on these. I'm running out, so hopefully this is fine. Put this valve in here. I also oiled the valve stem. You don't want to do that. That's what it looks like. And then I'll give you a little side view of what I'm doing here. Kind of. This valve stem a little bit by hand just to make sure there's no chunks of dirt or anything on it. Pull it up. Clean all that lapping compound off the valve. Kind of look at that pattern, see where it's hitting, where it's not hitting. This might take a few tries. Not really sure. Looks like it's cleaning up a little bit. Well, I'm gonna make a judgment call and say, I'm gonna throw those ones away too. But I'm gonna use this one. I'll get this seat all cleaned up and we'll come look at this in a minute. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm seeing. It doesn't look too bad. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead, keep going at this valve, trying to get it to look a little better, get some of these um, pits out of here, and I'll get back to you when I'm done that. Hey guys, so welcome back. Um, I've been driving the Corvette now for a few more days um, after doing the second piston swap and it's actually been doing pretty good. Um, I lowered the timing down. I started looking at my my ignition timing and somewhere or multiple times over the last uh, summer, I must have creeped up on my ignition timing. I thought that I only changed the um the the cruise timing um but so i don't know where it happened but i i at, at one point i oh actually now that i'm talking about it so I, I went in and i looked and at 10 degrees of timing i was seeing 19 pounds of boost but when i had dyno tuned i was only seeing like he tuned it for i think it was like 14 no 16 degrees of timing and 10 pounds of boost and we just left it there it ran 10 pounds of boost and that was like wastegate spring uh wastegate pressure so like 
I was just looking at it, and I actually, it didn't occur to me until now how that happened. But I remember I extended, like, the, the RPM, the, the boost range only went up to, uh, the map pressure only went up to, like, I think it was, like, 18. So I raised it to whatever my, my map sensor is. I think it was, like, 22 pounds or 22 and a half pounds. And I think maybe I didn't, I, I thought I would have, but maybe I didn't um, I'd readjust all my ignition parameters to match up with, like, you know, the, the boost, which I, I should have. But I'm, I'm guessing that's probably what happened. And I ended up with, like, this phantom extra three degrees at 10 PSI. Um, and I just never looked at it just because I'm an amateur. Um, but I think that's what happened. And that's why I've been, uh, I cracked two pistons. So... If you look over there on the wall, I have two pistons on the shelf of shame. This is the most recent cracked ring lands. And this is the next one, cracked ring lands. But I'm glad that I cracked it the second time, unfortunately, because I was getting a hot spot. Because I was. I could see like a hot spot in the valve um, where it was kind of potato chipped where the aluminum uh, piston piece ring land got caught between the valve and the head and closed and even though the valve was straight when I spun it on a drill um, when I laid the valve upside down on a on a flat plate you could see where it, it rocked a little bit um, so yeah, that's what happened, if you would imagine that. But anyways, so I figured I'd talk to you guys about um, something that I'm doing right now. So um, the oil level sensor on those LS pans, when we do swabs, I don't think we any of us use them. Uh, we probably just leave the sensor in there. Mine always leaks, so I put a new O-ring, and the O-ring didn't fit right. Um, I got it to fit. I used some black RTV. Um, and just got it in there good enough, but if I tightened it too much, the O-ring would just push out the side. So I actually went out and I got this. Uh, those threads are actually M20 by one and a half, if anybody needs to know, for that, uh, for that uh, sensor, for the oil level sensor. But if you look here, I have the Dorman equivalent. Um, it's just a oil drain plug. I don't know what vehicle it's for. I could probably figure it out if I wanted to, but it has an M20 by one and a half thread and it has a little um, washer in there, seal, washer seal thing, my jigger. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put that on. I'm going to drain the oil um, and I just put this oil in, so I'm going to clean the pan out real good. And I'm actually going to reuse the oil because it has like 100 miles on it and I use mobile one. Yeah, no, nope. lost my attention. Anywho, so I'll show you what we got here. Again, just in case you can read it before. 090, 040 CD, you can read, I think. So I guess I won't read it to you. 
but this should theoretically and I am truly being theoretical about it should go right there where that plastic thing is mine and it's been sitting here for like a couple seconds and we already have a few drops so mine I think has a crack in it and it's leaking out of the electrical um, whatever's so we'll get that pulled out see how fast we can swap in a uh a replacement and by replacement I mean proper plug man i hope you guys can see that because i can't my lighting sucks multiple people have told me that and I'm, I'm poor i can't can you see that Oop. oh frig yeah all right we got the giant wrench So I know you guys heard that. I was calling my dog and he wasn't coming. Um, and in case anybody's curious, um, uh, he used to hang out in here all the time with me. And a few months ago, I when I spun three rod bearings and swapped them out um, with fresh bearings and then just kept running it on the same crank and the same rods, um, he was okay with that, but, um, but ever since I drained that oil with a dress sock and then poured it back into my engine, he refuses to come into the garage now. So, that's the story behind that. I'm gonna lose a lot of oil, I know that. Because, uh, there's a bunch of black, <laughs> black RTV on here. Gosh, this is gonna be a mess. Out. Oh man, I really just want to dump the new one on here. But there's a lot of silicone. Oh yeah, there's my o ring still stuck to it. To the pan. God, I didn't just send that on there. Holy cow. Alright. Well, I didn't have that much oil in there actually. I knew it was getting low because it was just sitting there leaking. Oh yeah, Ooh, I got, oh I just got all that silicone off too. There's a little bit in the thread there, but. It's all right if that goes into the pan, that's what a screen's for. I'm just kidding, guys. Oh yeah, I think I got all that off. All right, all right that's good enough for me. What's sitting in this? Oh yeah, I can confirm M20 by one and a half. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. I'm sure it's probably a size 14 or 15. I don't know. 11, 16 is close enough. Tell you that much. Oh yeah, that is perfect. I don't know how tight it's supposed to go. I mean, I'm sure there's a torque, but... I'm still gonna spray this down. Try and clean her up. Just so I can maybe track down some more. But I'm hoping that when I was driving around, all that air and stuff flying all over the place to the air, uh, was just moving that oil around. It was kind of splattering all over everything, but I couldn't get so lucky, but I'll try. Oh man, this stuff works pretty good. Forgot to pick up some parts cleaner when I was walking through the parts cleaner aisle. 
So, I got some electrical cleaner. Seems we're doing alright. Surprisingly well. Oops. Oh man, it is all over my starter. So much oil. Well, we don't need to spend this much time on it, but it's okay. I'm sure the rest of it, like this fitting right here, let me show you guys. I am very certain that this AN line from my turbo is leaking like a sieve. Um, if you guys have any issues with these leaking, no matter what to do, I mean, obviously I've beaten the snot out of mine, probably didn't install it right. Just tapped right into the freaking pan but i think it drips right from this whoop, connection up here there's an o-ring in there and i think that it's leaking right there um but yeah anyways this is the underside of my my turbo my ls turbo you can see i have a zip tie job on my plug wires it actually works pretty good I fried some plug wires in like two miles when I first got this thing together with that wrap on it. And then my buddy told me to use zip ties, so I did. And actually, it worked extremely well keeping them off the exhaust. But on this side, you can see, whew, hopefully, I can get you up here and you can see the insulation on this one is freaking gone. Like, oh, that's like, let me see if I show you guys. I can't show you. Uh, anyways, yeah, so the insulation is completely fried on that thing. I really need to work on some better lighting. But yeah, as you can see, everything's zip tied. No zip ties cut. You always leave the tails hanging off because then if you can stick a razor blade in there and undo that little grabber, you can just reuse your zip ties. Thank me later. Looks like I'm probably leaking a little bit up here. It's not dripping, and this whole braided section is actually dry but it looks like it's weeping a little bit out of these fittings but that's okay all right guys there you have it dorman 040-090 cd will uh replace oil level sensor on the ls uh, oil pans i believe that's the truck and the car pans wrenching on this thing this winter with some upgrades that are definitely coming to this manual transmission to help me with launches and you know some boost control and all this stuff but hopefully if that helped you guys out at all please subscribe hit the like button and we'll see you guys on the next video